Hey everyone. So in this video, I just want to talk about how I like to structure and start up my React projects. You see, in a lot of my tutorials, probably all of them for the last year or so, I do the same exact thing at the beginning of every single tutorial when it comes to a React project, which is basically set up my entire project as a very specific way. And I realized that always took up about five to 10 minutes of the beginning of every single one of my videos. And I wanted to stop repeating that same thing over and over and over again. So this video is going to be dedicated to that specifically. And then in the future, I'm gonna to link to this video so that we can skip this entire process in those videos and get straight to the content that you all care about. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I end up doing is I open up my command line interface. It's different depending on your operating system, but in my case, I use the Windows terminal and specifically from within that, the PowerShell. But it really doesn't matter because all the commands are basically gonna end up being the same. And what I do is I go to the, the exact directory where I want to put my project and I run npx create hyphen react hyphen app. And then I just name the app. And in this case, I'm gonna call it Mega Man versus Samus. Now this process can take anywhere from half a minute to five minutes, depending on your system, your internet connection, et cetera. Lately, I've been using Yarn over NPM just because it's a lot faster, but you can use either NPM or Yarn. That's not gonna change anything in relation to this video. The only difference is if you're using NPM, you'll have a package lock.json. Otherwise you'll have a Yarn lock. Okay, once it's done, you'll see this screen here. And I just clear it out and then no longer do I need this anymore. Well, actually, the easiest way to open this up in my favorite code editor is just to CD into the directory it just created for me and then type in code dot and it'll open it up in VS code for me. And then now I no longer need my terminal. Now I'm going to zoom everything in. So you can see um, it creates the standard React project for me. This is where I'm going to show you how I like to structure my project and some of the things that I like to do in terms of configuration to make it easier and better for me to code in general. So the very, very first thing that I like to do is I like to start by creating a prettier config file and that is dot prettier RC. Now you can install prettier as a dependency and in combination with other libraries, you can do unique stuff like actually have commands to run prettier throughout your project or force prettier to run before a commit and those sorts of things. I like to do that when I work on a team so that when each person works on the code, it kind of forces the same formatting for everybody. But since I'm the only person that does the code for these tutorials, it's easier for me just to integrate it with VS code. So I'll show you how I do that here. So I start by pasting in my preferred configuration. This is the configuration that I like to use for my YouTube videos and then saving it. Once it's saved, now I have this prettier RC config file with my preferred config. I go into my file, preferences, settings. I click on workspace and there's a few things that I have to do here. The first thing is I type in prettier into the search bar and I find this config path. Just go ahead and put in the config path as you can see, it's the path to the configuration file that I just created a moment ago. And then the second thing I do is I type in format and I, t I go ahead and check format on save. And then for default formatter, I scroll down until I find prettier. So I go ahead and select prettier here. And then that is all I need here. Now, as you can see, when you make workspace settings for your project, it creates a .vs code directory right here. Now, I don't like to commit this because people like to have their own VS code settings and I don't like to force my settings on other people. So in order to prevent myself from committing this settings.json file for my project, I actually go directly into my git ignore and add the .vs code folder to my git ignore so that I'm not committing my personalized settings. The second thing that I like to do is at the root, at the exact same level as the prettier config, I create a JS config, which is kind of like a configuration file for your JavaScript. So that file is called jsconfig.json. And all I really ever add most of the time is this configuration right here, which just sets the base URL to source, includes source. And what this allows me to do is import my files in a cleaner way. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a moment. So just keep that in mind. But for now, I'm going to show you how I like to structure my project. So now that I have all my configuration set up, the first thing I like to do is open up my source folder 
And depending on what kind of tutorial I'm doing, typically I'm not going to be talking about tests in most of my tutorials unless it's a tutorial on testing. So I like to delete this app.test file just to get it out of the way. And in the source folder, I create a new folder called components. And I end up creating folders for every component in this components folder. So it creates an app component for you by default. And I like to keep that as the highest order component in my application. So I want to create a new folder called app inside of the components folder. And I start by just dragging the app.js file into that new folder and the app.css file as well. Now, this is where things start to differ a little bit. Instead of using app.css, I rename this to styles.module.css so that I can use CSS modules. And there's benefits to using CSS modules. That's a video on its own, but that's the way that I prefer to do my CSS in my React projects. The second thing I like to do is come over to my app.js file and remove the two imports at the top because I'm, I'm gonna get rid of the React logo. I don't use that in my project and I renamed this. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that and import it correctly in a moment. But first I like to turn this into an arrow function and then get rid of all this default return stuff and just return the word app just to begin. Then I don't like to do default exports. So I get rid of that and move the export here. And now we have a empty component that just renders app and it's a arrow function but I do want to go ahead and import my styles, but here's the thing, right? So to begin with, I don't actually, I'm not using my styles. So if I rent, if I start this project up, it's going to say I have an unused variable and I don't like that. So what I like to do is just go ahead and turn this into a div and go ahead and give it a class name equal to main. So styles.main. That way it's at least using this. Now that class doesn't exist. So I just go in here and for every component, I just kind of create this empty main class and main selector. That way I'm not getting any warnings in the console that says, hey, you have this unused variable. So that is the beginning of what I do in terms of the structure. But now I have to actually change some stuff or this isn't gonna run. In fact, I'll show you. So I'm using yarn for this project. So I'm gonna say yarn start. But if you're using just plain NPM, you would say NPM start. So I'm going to run this and you'll see that we're going to get some errors. As you can see, this completely failed to compile. Now let's take a look at why. So the reason why is because inside of the index.js file for the project, which is where everything gets essentially bootstrapped. If we look here, we can see that we're importing app from a file that no longer exists. See, we moved the app component into a new folder and then inside of yet another folder. So really it ends up looking more like this. Now we get another error. So now it finds the file, but now it's saying attempted to import does not contain a default export. Now, if you remember, I got rid of the default export. I prefer to use non-default exports. So the thing that we would have to change here is to switch this from just being a default import to actually destructuring it out like this. And now it should work. See, now it compiled successfully. And then if I go to it here in the browser, you can see the word app. So now the project is running perfectly fine, but I'm still not done yet because look, one of the things that I don't like about this is I don't want to have to manually, like, let's say I have five different components. I don't want to have to do this long import for all five components. For example, it would look something like this. See how, if I have five different components here, I have to import them on five separate lines and the import statements are kind of long. And sometimes you just don't want to type all of that out. It's a little bit inconvenient and I would say not very clean. So in order to fix that, there's a couple of things that I like to do. So for every component that I create, I create a folder for that component. There's the actual component JavaScript file. There's a styles.module.css file. But also what I like to do is create an index.js file where I do nothing but export everything from the component. So notice how this exports everything from app. Then in the component level, I also create a new file that exports everything from that directory. So now what that means is in here, I can literally just get rid of this app slash app and import it like this. Notice how I don't get any errors. Now to make this even more simple, let's say my, 
I was trying to import a component from within here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to create a second component for example purposes only. So give me a moment to do that. So what I went ahead and did was just created another component called app2. Then in here, I did the exact same thing I did for app. I created an app2.js that just renders app2. I export it in my index.js file, and then I have my styles.module.css. And then the other index.js file that's at the components folder level also exports that just like it does for the app component. So now I just have two almost identical components so that I can use these for examples. So let's say hypothetically inside of my app component, I want to import my app2 component. Normally, it would look a little something like this, right? I would have to import app2 from, and then I'd have to go out of this directory into the app2 directory like that. Or I, since I have uh, the ability to import it from the components directory directly, I could just do this. But what if I don't want to do these relative imports? What if I don't want to import everything relative to the current location? So for this, I'm importing it relatively because I have to leave this directory in order to get it. What if I just wanted to import it like this? It, this would be so much more simple if I could just have these more absolute path style imports. Well, that was the whole reason I did the JS config here. We're saying that the base URL, if we do an absolute URL, is going to be the source folder. So this is an absolute URL because we're not including a relative path. So we're saying that from the components folder is where we want to import app2. So just to show that it works, I'm going to render app2 here and refresh the browser. And now you can see both components are on the screen. So it makes it really clean. If I go to the index.js file that bootstraps the entire application. Now, if I wanted to also render app2 at this level here, instead of having to have a completely separate line, I could simply put a comma after app and say app2. Now I'm rendering both of these at the same time. And as you can see, there's no errors whatsoever. So it makes it really easy to say, if I want to create a bunch of components, let's say I have 20 components all being exported from my components folder, I can put them all within the same import statement. And instead of doing the relative path here, I could just import it using an absolute path like that. So that's just a quick explanation of why I like to put the index.js files in all of the directories and kind of structure it like that. Another reason is because in the future, let's say I want to turn this into a reusable component library that other apps can install, by exporting each one like this individually it makes it way easier for the consuming application to import those components. And it also makes it way easier for the bundler to be able to distinguish between components and bundle them. Okay, so with that being said, I'm almost done here, but there's still a few other things that I like to do to my project. So one thing I like to do is delete the React logo because I don't use that in my projects. So I went ahead and deleted that. The next thing I like to do is go into my public folder and then delete both of these React logos, replace them with my own, of course. Then go inside of the manifest.json file and make sure you delete all the references to the React logos here. Here you would add your own. Then I like to change this from React app to whatever the name of the application is that I'm working on. In this case, it's Mega Man versus Samus. And then, you know, update the, the name as well. And then finally, you can go inside of the index.html file and find the title and replace this title with that. And also make sure to replace your fav icon or fav icon. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that right. Replace it, the React one with your own, and just know that that's being imported in here, right here. Now here, you're gonna notice that there's, Im there's references to importing logos right here for the Apple touch icon. If I were to run this, if I were to run this in Google Chrome and then look inside of the console, I would probably get a 404 because it's looking for a file that no longer exists because I just deleted that logo. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. And then whenever I replace it with my own logo in the future, I can uncomment this. Now, as I start to build out my project and it gets larger and larger, I start to add in like helper functions and custom hooks and those sorts of things. So what I like to do is I create folders for those in here. Helper functions, constants, those sorts of things. Um, I like to put inside of a folder called shared and then hooks. Of course, I like to put inside of a folder called hooks. Now, every single time I create a new hook or a new file inside of my shared file, I want to add it to an index.js file, just like I am for my components so that I can very easily import them all in the same import statement. So if I have five hooks here, got to make sure that inside of an index.js file that I'm exporting each one accordingly. Now, in this scenario here, I don't have any hooks or anything like that in here, so I don't 
need to export anything. I can just leave these index.js files empty until I have actual shared files and hooks. But the point is, is I follow this same structure here for all of those. Now, I don't keep a separate folder for each of my hooks because I don't think that that's makes much sense because a component has several files involved, you know, a CSS file, etc., cetera, um, and sometimes even more than that. So it makes sense to keep a component inside of its own folder. But for a, a custom hook, I what I like to do is just keep them all in the same folder and then export them all from here and the exact same for my shared. So as we do tutorials on my channel and as you follow along, you'll start to see that I use this exact same structure in pretty much all of my videos, at least for the last year or two. And I believe that is it. So that is pretty much how I set up my, my project structure. That is usually the first thing that I do at the beginning of all of my tutorials. I wanted to create a dedicated video for this so that in the future, I don't have to do that at the beginning of my videos. That usually takes like five to 10 minutes. So from now on, what I'm going to do is link to this video and then skip all of that in those videos so that we can get straight to the content from now on. And hopefully that'll make my videos a little bit more interesting for you all.